This is Jocko Podcast number 35 with Echo Charles and me, Jocko Willink. Good evening, Echo. Good evening. Weeper was ahead when he and Bourne reached the gap in the wire. Star shell after star shell was going up now, and the whole line had woken up. Machine guns were talking, but there was one that would not talk. The rattle of musketry continued, but the mist was kindly to them. It had thickened again. As they got beyond the trampling, clutching wire, Bourne saw a Weeper a couple of paces ahead of him, and what he thought was the last of their party disappearing into the mist about 20 yards away. He was glad to be clear of the wire. Another star shell went up, and they both froze in stillness under its glare. Then they moved again, hurrying for all they were worth. Bourne felt a sense of triumph and escape thrill in him. Anyway, the Hun couldn't see him now. Something kicked him in the upper part of the chest, rending its way through him, and his agonized cry was scarcely audible in the rush of blood from his mouth as he collapsed and fell. Weeper turned his head over his shoulder, listened, stopped, and went back. He found Bourne trying to lift himself, and Bourne spoke, gasping, suffocating. Go on, I'm scuppered. I'll not leave thee, said Whipper, said Weeper. He stood and lifted the other in his huge, ungangly arms, carrying him as tenderly as though he were a child. Bourne struggled wearily to speak and the blood filling his mouth prevented him. Sometimes his head fell on Weeper's shoulder. At last, barely articulate, a few words came. I'm finished. Leave me in peace for God's sake. You can't. I'll not leave thee, said Weeper in an infuriate rage. He felt Bourne stretch himself in a convulsive shudder, and relax, becoming suddenly heavier in his arms. He struggled on, stumbling over the shell-plowed ground through that fantastic mist which moved like an army of wraiths hurrying away from him. Then he stopped and taking the body by the waist with his left arm, flung it over his shoulder, steadying it with his right. He could see their wire now, and presently he was challenged and replied, he found the way through the wire and staggered into the trench with his burden. Then he turned down the short stretch to Monk Trunch, Trench and came on the rest of the party outside A Company's dugout. I've brought him back, he cried desperately and collapsed with the body on the duck boards.